Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair. My name is Marcus Gray Hauk. I am the Director of Music Ministries, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. It is good to have you with us for worship. If you are watching this live on Facebook, we invite you to share your name and your location in the comments. Let us know you are here. We begin today with a hymn that we haven't sung in a long time. It is called, With Joy We Claim the Growing Light. Our hymn leader today is Jill Beckman Gaines. you are, wherever you come from, whatever age, identity, history, ability, gender, sexual orientation, or political affiliation, you are welcome to bring your full self here. Grounded in faith, we come together to nurture the soul, inspire hope, and bring into being a more just and loving world. I'm Reverend Anya Samler Michael. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am Reverend Scott Samler Michael. My pronouns he, him, his. 
If you're joining us today at 9.30, please continue with us for a virtual Connection Cafe beginning at 10.30 a.m. Check your email and Realm announcements for the Zoom link. And today's Connection Cafe will include a special opportunity to hear from and share with Lily Rappaport. Lily has served our congregation as our Developmental Director of Religious Education, a two-year contracted position with the expressed purpose of developing our religious education program. And Lily is a well-respected educator who has helped our congregation bridge many gaps and learn a good deal about who we want to be in the future. Please join us in Connection Cafe to tell Lily what you remember and what you have appreciated in her work. I personally will miss Lily's sense of humor and the ways that she gives generously to care for every single child. It's time now to light our chalice, a beacon to guide us through these times. Perhaps you have a chalice or candle at home, anything you can illumine. Let's light our collective chalices as we share our chalice lighting affirmation. Let us open our eyes to see what is beautiful. Let us open our minds to learn what is true. Let us open our hearts to love one another. To love one another. Let us open our eyes to see what is beautiful. Let us open our minds to learn what is true. Let us open our hearts to love one another. To love one another. Come into this house of worship. Come bringing all who you are. Rest and quiet your weak, warm spirit. For you are here to touch again the internal springs of hope and renewal. Calm your hurry pace for this hour. Let the cares, the fretfulness, and the worries be set aside. Forgive yourself. You are very worthy of moving on, of making new efforts, of trying again. Know that you are not alone. There is strength and caring support for you here. You will find comfort if you but ask. Look around. You are a part of potential community. You can make it what you will. Enter into this house of worship. Oh, hi. I'm sorry, I was just finishing up my Sunday school prep. I'm Donna Hilton, and together with Jason Broom, we co-chair religious education here at Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair. You know, this congregation was founded by women who wanted excellent religious education for their children. So RE, as we like to call it, is really a foundation for this congregation. That's why it's so important to us. And it doesn't succeed without volunteers. Jason and I couldn't do this by ourselves. It's the amazing volunteers that help keep RE running. I hope you know how much we appreciate you. A special shout out to Lily Rappaport, whose two-year appointment as Developmental Director of Family Ministries is just about ending. Another thank you to Judith Hogan, who steps up into a new role, Director of Religious Education. Judith, Lily, all of our committee members, teachers, every RE volunteer, this is for you. Could anyone ever 
than home. How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? We enter into this space of depth as we each are called, finding a soft meditation, a deep reflection, an ardent prayer, each as we are called, but all together. And we enter into this space by hearing the lamentations, the requests, and the remembrances of our community. Let us hear one another to heal one another. Dan and Leslie Silver mourn the passing of friend David Chapin, a Montclair native who had introduced them to this congregation almost 30 years ago. And the Silvers share, he will be missed, missed by many, and loved in our hearts always. We light this candle to celebrate pride and to honor all of the individuals in our congregation and beyond who risk to be their honest, full, beautiful selves. You are seen and we believe in you. Peter Arian lights a candle of hope for Dave and Peter shares, Dave is someone I got to know when he was a frequent guest at our Montclair Emergency Services for the Homeless, Mesh Cafe. Dave lives at the bus stop I see outside my living room window. We talk regularly, and we had several exchanges this week, and in our last conversation, Dave told me he just received his stimulus check, and he asked, did I need any money? I pray for him every day, says Peter. Perhaps we can too. Ray DeMont would like to light a candle of love for her stepdaughters, Caitlin and Casey, and she hopes it may shine a little light in the midst of their grief. And we light this final candle for the joys and sorrows that have not been spoken aloud. In the silence that follows, you are encouraged to speak the names of those you are holding in your prayers or meditations. May we hold this silence as this silence holds us. May our listening bring forth acts of love. Please continue with me in this spirit of prayer or meditation. God of our understanding, spirit of life, love, justice, and mercy, we are weary and we are worn. We have traveled many miles, told we were less than, less than beautiful, less than whole, many dry miles over which the tears of our friends, our kin, did not run. Dry miles of indifference, dry miles of silence. We ask forgiveness for all we didn't say, didn't do, didn't feel, didn't hear. Forgiveness from ourselves and for our kindred. Forgiveness for our weakness. God of our understanding that bends in mercy, like a child bends to touch the earth, holy justice overcoming like a river flowing. We bend in prayer and meditation to drink from you. Cup that overflows in praise of pride for every soul's self-expression, gay, lesbian, transgender, gender non-conforming, queer, free and alive in worth and dignity and for a world made complete by our divine diversity. In praise as well for black lives, for black bodies, holy being, for black mothers, sons, fathers, kindred, family, cup that overflows like a river flowing, holy justice overcoming, in moments and in our promise, one to another to never leave this movement, the movement toward beloved community, We bend in prayer and meditation and drink from you and forget our isolation 
and forgive our limitation and forego our self-incrimination and know our connection and serve our community and taste our liberation. Amen, amen, in praise and thanksgiving, in vigilance, may it be so. We gather from the ebb and flow of our lives, thirsty for connection to ourselves, thirsty for connection to others, thirsty for connection to the larger life. Here, may we be filled so that we may pour ourselves out into the world. hold the vision with clarity, and charge forward with optimism even in the face of others' doubts. You are our lamplighters and our guides. May we never forget the courage it takes to lead the way forward. In honor of the cautious skeptics, 
those that gather the information needed to navigate the tumultuous waters of change. You are the map makers and the preparers of the stores. May we appreciate your attention to the details that keep us on course. In honor of the doubters, those that may fear the changing tides of a turbulent world, you are our anchors and remind us of where we have been and where we are as a community now. May we relish your commitment to our history and your passion for who we have become. In honor of the dreamers, those that imagine what we can be to and in this world, you are the wind that blows the sails of change, pushing us ever forward. May we revel always in your whimsy and hope that dares us to never stop becoming. May the work we do together strengthen our community and our world. May we heed the call to always hold the vision of the free church ever in our sight and to work towards justice. Together, we wield a powerful spirit that is strengthened by the gifts of all. Holy justice overcoming like a river flowing. Imagine that with me. Imagine if within our faith there was justice that flowed like a river, a mighty river that had an even mightier watershed, a mighty river that was permanent and fed from many sources, a mighty river that never went dry. The first river that I thought of was the Mississippi. My southern eyes could envision the mighty flow of the Mississippi as our faith. It felt right. Then I remembered this song by the Indigo Girls called Ghost. They sing, And the Mississippi's mighty, But it starts in Minnesota, At a place that you could walk across With five steps down. Which also reminds me of the way that Unitarian Universalism has been practiced historically and today. You use often lay claim to our history of James Reeb, the young white UU minister who left his family in Boston to join Dr. King in Selma and was murdered because of who he was and the stance that he took. UUs are very proud to be the denomination of James Reeb, yet they still struggle to claim the racist history of the Unitarian Universalism's black empowerment controversy. After the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., black Unitarian Universalists yearned to identity caucus, meaning people who shared similar identities coming together amongst themselves. Identity caucusing around race was something new at the time and some powerful white Unitarian Universalists reacted badly out of white fragility. They were incensed that they might be excluded from a meeting about justice. And because they were unwilling to support their black colleagues, they encouraged some black leaders to join with them and form a rival group. The black Unitarian Universalists who knew they needed to gather by themselves only to make sense of their relationship to Unitarian Universalism and what was happening in the country were disrespected and denied meeting space. So to try to appease them, the UUA pres president, Dana Greeley, promised them a million dollars at the UUA, except for the UA didn't have that. Then when it was discovered that the million dollars was not coming, over 1,000 black UUs left the denomination. What made this was this particularly troubling was that in the decade leading up to the 1969 black empowerment controversy, the UUA had experienced an explosion of black membership growth because of our visible commitment to civil rights. This and so many other instances of our history is the river that we walked across just one of our anemic imaginings of the mighty river of justice that we have shown that we can be. Yet, we can still imagine that our faith is full of the dreamers. 
that have vivid imaginings and workers who have the resilience for us to make those dreams reality. We are all still here, which means that we all still have a chance to embody the principles of our faith. So how do we get to that place? How do we build this community, this faith, this village? How do we keep our river full and flowing? I've been grappling with these questions since I started to learn about our Unitarian Universalist history. The Unitarians, the Universalist, and the Unitarian Universalists have chosen to make racist, systematic decisions that have suppressed the growth of people of color ministers, people of color congregations, and people of color top administrators within our denomination. I've seen how the history of Unitarian Universalism has been whitewashed to erase the existence of people of color. I was confused by the history that I was learning because I had been a UU for years and had never heard of any of the stories that I was learning. I consulted an elder, an elder of color, about how I could live in community with my new understanding of my denomination. This elder reminded me that as a member of the village, it isn't my job to judge what other people think. It isn't my job to judge whether people believe in white supremacy. However, it is my job to offer the information, to learn how to decolonize my own mind, and to offer people the tools to help them decolonize their own mind. It is my job to offer love and compassion. It is my job to speak my truth. It is my job to get on the bus heading towards the new way of thinking and being. It is also my job to remember that not everyone else will get on the bus with me. Some people will stay behind and I'll need to be okay with that. Why? Why? Because we live in a village that has a community of communities. Everyone won't agree on everything. She reminded me that it is a time that we circle around to build a better community. It is time. It is time to circle around. A community in which we're all seen and valued. She reminded me that all meant all. All meant the people who couldn't see that there was an issue and the people who could. The people who would say that all lives matter and the people who would say that black lives matter. In a village, all means all. She also reminded me that sometimes community means drawing circles inside of circles, circles of protection. Her reminders resonate with me today. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it play out in our village. I'm witnessing the white privilege that allows people to believe that we can all do the same things in the same ways to gain liberation. That we will not build a village that doesn't nurture everyone if we do it the same way. But we need a village. We need a village that nurtures the whole. There are many paths to liberation. To be able to be healthy, we must see that. To be able to be healthy, we must be real. To be able to be real, we must face truth. To face the truth, we must be able to sit in discomfort. And this is the part of the sermon that's going to be uncomfortable for some people to hear. The truth is that people of color are tired. We are tired, so tired, of holding the fragility of white people. We are tired, so tired, of holding the fragility of white people to be able to be in community with white people. We are already holding so much. 
I want you to sit with that. And I want you to hold that. Conversely, from speaking to my accountability partners, yes, accountability works both ways. I know that some white people are tired. They are tired of getting it wrong. They are tired of trying to do the right thing and having it be the wrong thing. Some are even tired of being responsible for their siblings who are unwilling to do the work. Can you also hold that? The reality is that we are all tired. We are tired of the inequality. We are tired of trying to fix an archaic system that imprisons each of us to a cycle of destruction. So now what? Now what? The answer is different for different groups of people. Some people would say that the answer is in caucusing. It is in gathering to heal our identity groups from the generational trauma of white supremacy and then joining together, staying together, and learning together, making mistakes together, and granting grace together. Some may think quietly that nothing at all needs to be fixed. Nothing needs to be fixed. Nothing needs to be fixed. <sighs> the thought of that left me to cry out, Oh Lord, what are you asking of me? What are you asking of me? <laughs> I, I didn't receive an answer or maybe the quiet was the answer. Maybe what was needed for me was to be listening or paying attention. To clear away the thoughts, to be uncomfortable, to feel less sure about what I thought I knew and what I wanted to communicate. I have an idea of what needs to happen and I'm struggling. I am struggling with the answer. I believe that to have a healthy village, we must practice compassion. To have compassion, we must live in a place inside of us that recognizes that we are humans, we are complex, we are imperfect. The complexity is what makes it impossible to embrace our humanity whilst holding on to the illusion that we are not creatures of duality. I don't want to do that. I don't want to embrace the duality of the officers that have killed so many black people. I don't want to think that they are murderers and they are people deserve it of compassion. How do I even do that? How do I even do that? I know that it can be done. It takes meditation. It takes lament. It takes filling myself with compassion, love, jubilation. It takes me tapping into my values that each person deserves compassion even if that's all that I can offer. That is where I'm not ready to be. I'm not ready to be there. I am still too harmed. I'm enraged. I'm disappointed in the events that have been inflicted upon black lives in the world and Unitarian Universalism. I am too raw to occupy that space. Yet here I am doing the work begrudgingly. I am here inviting you to do the work too because until we all do this work, we cannot be liberated. 
Until we all do this work, we cannot maintain safety in our village. Until we all do this work, we cannot heal our denomination. No matter how difficult it is, we must do this work. We must do this work. In the poem, Please Call Me By My True Names, Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, Don't say that I will depart tomorrow. Even today, I'm still arriving. Look deeply. Every second, I am arriving to be a bud on a spring branch, to be a tiny bird with still fragile wings, to be a caterpillar in the heart of a flower to be a jewel hiding itself in a stone. I still arrive in order to laugh and to cry, to fear and to hope. The rhythm of my heart is birth and death of all that is alive. I am the mayfly metamorphosizing on the surface of the river, and I am the bird that swoops down to swallow the mayfly. My joy is like spring, so warm it makes flowers bloom all over the earth. My pain is like a river of tears, so vast it fills four oceans. Please call me by my true names so I can hear all my cries and laughter at once, so I can see that my joy and pain are one. Please call me by my true names so I can wake up and so the door of my heart can be left open. The door of compassion. This morning, in our invocation, we were invited into community. In the reading, we were invited to work together to strengthen our community and our world. In our prayer, we were invited to imagine a river of justice, and now we must gather from the ebb and flow of our lives. We must drink from the river of justice. We must practice the compassion that is difficult and uncomfortable and needed. We must recognize the duality of each of us and hold each of us in love and compassion. We must build a healthy village. We must. How will I hold compassion for myself and for people who have caused harm? Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow.
As Unitarian Universalists, one thing that we value is the interdependent web of existence of which we are a part. The health of this web relies on us giving of our time, our talents, and our resources. When you give monetarily to the U, 80% of your gifts will care for the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair, and 20% will support our justice recipient. In light of the pandemic, our Sharing Our Riches team has selected Newark Emergency Services for Families, a nonprofit organization which has served the greater Essex County community for over 40 years, providing quality services to individuals and families who need assistance with emergency food, clothing, shelter, utilities, rent, and basic necessities during times of crisis. You can text to give, mail us a check, or go to our homepage and click on the donate button. This is a time of need. All of your gifts are worthy and they are all received with love. May we go forth strong in our determination to build our healthy village. May we abide by our river of justice and know that we all can keep it flowing strong. Amen. Will you say this with me? We gather from the ebb and flow of our lives, thirsty for connection to ourselves, thirsty for connection to others, thirsty for connection to the larger life. Here, May we be filled so that we may pour ourselves out into the world. Our worship has ended. Let our service begin. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in until we meet again. Virtually or otherwise, you, you are, are in our hearts. hearts. This song is for those who inspire us today Who always lend a helping hand to help show us the way This song is for those who see their students through The tough times in their lives For that we say thank you You have made a difference You have shaped our minds have changed the world one child at a time you have always been there in everything you do i hope that you're as proud of me as i am proud of you this song is for those who heard the silent cries who stepped in to wipe the tears from the children's eyes for those who gave a safe place to grow A place for us to call our home Forever we will know that You have made a difference You have shaped our minds You have changed the world One child at a time You have always been there In everything you do I hope that you're as proud of me right from wrong who taught us much more than their craft to help our minds grow strong this song is for those who guide us through and through so that we can make a life for that we say thank you you have made a difference you have shaped our minds you have changed the world one child at time. You have always been there in everything you do. I hope that you're as proud of me as I am proud of you. As I look back on my life and to the path 
path within my reach I hope I can change a life of those that I teach I can make a difference All I do is try Try to see a different world Through the children's eyes And I will always be there In everything I do I hope that you're as proud of Everything I do, I hope that you're as proud of me as I am proud of you.
Oh yeah.